Now that we've talked about an overview of the lab, let's talk about the specific tools that we use in CPOC to aid in demonstrating and proving out these concepts. Specifically, let's hone in on the T-Rex. Now, as I said before, the T-Rex is a traffic generator. We're sending real traffic across the network in order to uh, trigger certain things like application aware routing, as well as show uh, paths are good between data centers and branches and stuff like that. How is it set up? Well, the main thing is that in this topology it's not shown, but we actually have a switch called Echo 14, and that switch actually is trunked to the UCS, and there are certain VLANs that are being carried down that trunk to Echo 14. Now these VLANs actually correspond with interfaces on our T-Rex, and then from there it's actually split out into a client-server pair. So, for example, Echo 14 has a physical interface connected to DC1 core and a separate physical interface connected to EX1's LAN side. There are more flows than this, but this is just an example. So in this case, the T-Rex will actually send traffic from, uh, from the EX1 site to the data center and vice versa for transactional client-server traffic. That'll be trunked down Echo 14, and then based on whether it is the client or the server, further uh, separated out into VLANs. So the server VLAN uh, interface goes to DC1, and the client VLAN interface goes behind EX1. And then we send traffic through the network from EX1 to DC1 for a transactional client-server uh, type of setup. Let's take a look and we can see how it's physically cabled here where I've created a small diagram. So from a physical standpoint you can see that the UCS has a dedicated vSwitch and uh, network interface dedicated just for this. It trunks down to what we call a fan out switch which is in this case just a I think it's a 4948 it could be a 3850 any layer 2 switch will, will work but it's a trunk carrying all the VLANs for the client and server interfaces that are allocated to the T-Rex. And then from here, we physically connect them to the different sites and send the correct VLAN down those physical interfaces. So uh, for DC1 servers, for example, we send only the VLAN for the DC1 servers down there to the DC, and the same for KCF, BR2, you know, so on and so forth. So what does that look like in VMware? Well, let's jump over there and take a look. All right, in VMware here, we can see that we have a V switch allocated for this purpose. And of course that V switch has a physical interface uh, associated with it. Now we've built VMware port groups, which are gonna be our virtual interfaces for the T-Rex and we've assigned each virtual interface a VLAN ID. So I've labeled them as, for example, T-Rex BR2, you know, using VLAN 881. That's a virtual interface on our T-Rex that's used for client traffic on branch two versus, say, T-Rex DC1 using VLAN ID 13, where that's an interface on the T-Rex which is dedicated to server traffic on the DC side. Now here on the T-Rex you can see where we have multiple virtual network adapters and they're mapped to the different port groups. And so in the T-Rex we've allocated this, these uh, virtual interfaces for that traffic, that client-server transactional traffic that we're going to send through the network. Now we can log into the T-Rex and take a look at it from the T-Rex side which is really just a Linux box uh, running the T-Rex application. So here you can see we have multiple interfaces um, just with different IP addresses and each IP address of course is uh, respective to its site at which it's connected. And remember that the T-Rex actually acts like a router. So the T-Rex will need an interface on the subnet to which it's attached, and then it emulates servers and clients 
uh, behind it as, as if it were a router. Let's go ahead and run some traffic through the network now and just see what that looks like from the T-Rex's perspective. So I'll go ahead and start the script which starts traffic generation and you can see that we're actually going to run traffic from EX1 to DC1 and I'm going to set it to run for about 30 seconds and we can just get an idea of what the T-Rex is going to report on. I'm sending an iMix of traffic which is to say a little bit of several applications uh, using certain connections per second, certain client server settings, and it's just going to run traffic uh, across the network from EX1 to DC1 using the routing across the SD-WAN fabric to make that happen. And when it's done, it should give us a report based on how much of that traffic made it across, how much packet loss there was, and so on and so forth. And you can see here this is the kind of uh, report that the T-Rex will spit out when we're done, showing how much we sent, how much was received, and how many problems we had. So it's not extremely featurific. It's mostly used to, again, send the traffic and be able to show traffic on the dashboard in the vManage, for example, and also to prove out that we're getting good traffic flows between two sites in this particular instance. Let me try to show this another way by looking at the configuration YAML file here for the T-Rex. So this is the, what the YAML file looks like for the flow configured to send EX1 to DC1 uh, client server data. So you can see that we've configured interfaces on the T-Rex uh, 110.1.13.65. The default gateway is actually the DC1 core switch. And the other interface on the port pair is 10.181.1.65. Its default gateway is the core switch at EX1. Let me try to show this a different way with another drawing. So here you can see the T Rex, again, a virtual machine running on the UCS chassis and trunked down to Echo 14 where the physical connections are made, T-Rex has two virtual interfaces for this port pair in this traffic flow, one going to DC1, one going to EX1. Again, the servers and clients don't actually exist, they're being emulated via the T-Rex. The servers are being routed to the DC1 core, and the EX1 clients are being routed to the EX1 core and then they're being routed to each other through the actual network over the SD-WAN. And that's basically how the T-Rex flow is set up. We have multiple flows here, but I wanted to focus on one in order to show you basically how it's set up and how it works. There's one more thing we need to pay attention to in order to close the loop on how the T-Rex works in our SD-WAN topology. Notice that DC1 servers and EX1 clients use completely different subnets. These subnets actually aren't used anywhere else in the network. In fact, they only exist on the T-Rex itself. There's a YAML file that we use for the configuration to tell the T-Rex what servers and clients should use for their IP addressing. And since these don't actually exist anywhere on the network, we need some way to make sure that they can route to each other. In our case, what we do is we set a static route on the SDN fabric pointing towards the T-Rex itself as the next hop for these subnets. So let's take a quick look at that. So here I am in a VPN template, and the VPN template is where we can inject static routes. Notice here that we have an IPv4 route. In this case, because we're sharing this template across multiple devices, we're using a variable. So the prefix is T-Rex VPN IP prefix. And the next hop is a variable also. In this case, T-Rex VPN next hop IP address. This is going to be the IP address that's allocated to the T-Rex that actually exists on the network. So for these subnets that don't actually exist anywhere, 
we're statically routing them to and from the T-Rex, and we're using our VPN template and IPv4 static routing to make that happen.